What's stopping you from getting promoted as a software engineer? Is it your technical skills? Probably not. It's most likely how you approach these three key areas. Ownership, impact, and influence. These aren't just buzzwords. They're the key to unlocking your career growth at any level. Depending on where you are in your career, you may need to emphasize one over the others. But trust me, success ultimately boils down to how you navigate these three areas. Today, I'll explain exactly what they mean and how to level them up at every stage in your career. I'll also have some actionable steps you can start taking right away. So if you're tired of waiting for your manager to notice your hard work and give you that promotion, grab a coffee, get comfortable, and let's dive in. Let's start with the first of the three pillars, ownership. Let's be real, most engineers think they own their work just because they write the code. But that's only one aspect of ownership, implementing what has been assigned to you, but true ownership goes deeper. Ownership also means knowing the features or services assigned to you like the back of your hand. It's not just about writing the code and throwing it over the wall. You stay involved, testing, debugging, and ensuring it works seamlessly in production. If a change requires sending out updates, you take the initiative to send out those updates. If something isn't working well after a deployment, you step up to identify what went wrong and propose how to fix it. Ownership is about taking full responsibility for your work and being visible in how you manage it. Now, that's easier said than done. At the junior level, there's a lot you might not know about how things work and that can create obstacles. However, the only way to overcome those obstacles is to face them head on and use the best tool you have, which is asking questions. Ask questions to gather context. Don't just blindly work on the task you're given and call it a day. Understand why you're doing it. What purpose does it serve? How does it fit into the bigger picture? This not only builds your confidence, but also helps you learn better and much, much faster. As a junior software engineer, here are some actionable items you can start taking to show ownership. Document what you're working on. Keep track of the features or services you touch. Write down the problems you solved, the decisions you made, and why. This helps build your understanding and serves as reference for the future. Communicate regularly. Update the team on your progress, any roadblocks, and what you plan to tackle next. This keeps you visible and helps others trust that you're fully engaged in the task that you're assigned. Step up during crisis. If something breaks, don't wait to be asked to help. Dive in, investigate, and propose solutions, even if you're not sure. Taking initiative is a huge part of ownership. Ownership isn't about having all the answers or being perfect. It's about showing up, taking responsibility, and making sure you follow through. Start with these steps and over time, you'll build a reputation as someone who truly owns their work. Now, what does ownership look like at the senior or the principal level? Here's the shift. You're no longer just owning your code. You're owning systems, plural. At this level, your focus broadens significantly. You're thinking long-term, considering how to scale systems, ensure reliability, design for maintainability, and manage how your service interacts with others. You're not just focused on the technical details, but also on how your work supports overarching business goals. Your perspective shifts from what's my role in this to how can this system and its dependencies succeed as a whole. At this stage, ownership is proactive. You don't wait for someone to hand you tasks. You're identifying gaps, proposing solutions, and driving initiatives. It's like going from being a chef who only makes one dish to running the entire kitchen. It's much more responsibility, but also way more fun. So how can you start exhibiting senior stroke principal level ownership today? Here are some actionable steps you can take. Proactively drive initiatives. If you notice inefficiencies, propose and lead initiatives to fix them. This might involve organizing team discussions, preparing a proposal, or creating a proof of concept. Create a vision. Think about the future of the systems you manage. What will they need to handle in six months, a year, or beyond? Share this vision with your team and use it to guide discussions. Mentor and delegate. Ownership at this level often means enabling others. Teach junior or mid-level engineers to take ownership of their work and empower them to solve problems independently. Audit the systems you own. Dive deep into understanding how the systems or services you own interact with others. Identify bottlenecks, areas of improvements, or potential concerns. Be a decision maker. When tough calls need to be made, whether it's about trade-offs, deprecations, or redesigns, step up and make those decisions. Provide clear reasoning and take accountability for the outcomes. Last but not least, communicate broadly. Share updates, risk, and success with stakeholders, both technical and non-technical. Senior level ownership is as much about managing expectations as it is about managing systems. Ownership at this level isn't just about fixing problems, it's about anticipating them. By thinking strategically, taking initiative and empowering others, you establish yourself as a leader who doesn't just own their work, but also owns the success of systems and your team's growth. Next, let's talk about impact. At the mid-level, your impact comes from the quality of the work you deliver. 
It's not about completing the task. It's about the results that those tasks produce. Ask yourself, are you shipping features on time? Are those features solving the right problems? Also, how independent are you in delivering those solutions? When you first join a team, you will naturally need help as you ramp up, but the expectation is that you'll gradually become more independent. This doesn't mean you shouldn't ask for help when you're stuck. You absolutely should. But asking for help shouldn't be a recurring theme for the same type of issue. Over time, you should learn to exercise your problem-solving skills and be resourceful before reaching out for help. Another critical factor to consider in creating impact is whether the work you're doing is delivering measurable value. Some examples of these include increasing customer satisfaction, increasing revenue, improving performance metrics, and much more. You need to ensure you can measure the impact of your work. If you can't measure it, it's most likely just busy work, and busy work doesn't get you promoted. For instance, spending a month rewriting a code base that's already functional doesn't inherently add significant value. However, if you must do that work, you should focus on the measurable benefits and justify your efforts. For example, you could say rewriting the code base allowed you to implement tests, making the system more robust and reduced downtime. The new code structure could also make onboarding faster for new team members, increasing productivity. Always try to measure the impact of your work. Metrics are your friend. They make it easier for you to prove your impact. If your work doesn't move the needle in some way, whether for your team, customers, or the business, it's harder to demonstrate your value, plain and simple. Here are some actionable steps you can start taking to create impact as a junior software engineer. Define measurable goals before starting a project. What does success look like? Work with your manager or stakeholders to establish clear measurable outcomes for the task or projects that you take on. Track your contributions. Maintain a log of your work, noting what you delivered and the outcomes it achieved. Include metrics in there as well, like reduced bug count, increased speed, or improved user feedback scores. Focus on solving high priority problems. Understand the team's goals and align your work to support those goals. Prioritize tasks that have clear direct benefit for customers or the business. Lastly, communicate your wins. Don't assume your work speaks for itself. Share your successes in team meetings, retrospects, or progress reports to ensure that your impact is visible. By focusing on measurable results, aligning your work with business goals, and taking ownership of your outcomes, you will establish yourself as an engineer who consistently delivers impact. When you hit the senior level, the stakes get higher. Impact is not just about what you deliver personally, it's about the results your team or group achieves. At this stage, the expectation is for you to multiply your impact by using others. You do this by mentoring teammates, streamlining processes, and ensure that the systems or services you own are built for success. You are no longer in the trenches writing every line of code. Instead, you empower others to succeed. This means writing design documents that clarify technical direction, providing thoughtful code reviews that elevate the quality of the team's work, and making sure your team's efforts align with the broader company goals. Here are some actionable items you can start doing to show impact on the senior level. Drive team-wide initiatives. Identify systematic problems or inefficiencies in your team's processes, such as long debugging cycles or bottlenecks in deployments, and lead efforts to resolve them. Write clear design documents. Create detailed technical specs and designs for new features or projects. Focus on clarity, so your team knows the what, why, and how of the work ahead. Think beyond code. Advocate for technical investments, such as improving CI-CD pipelines or refactoring legacy systems that will pay off in the future for the entire team. Justify these investments with metrics or examples of how they'll save time or reduce errors. Mentor consistently. Regularly review the work of senior or mid-level engineers, not just for correctness, but to teach best practices. Share your knowledge through one-on-ones, team talks, and documentation. Enable autonomy. Delegate effectively, giving teammates the opportunity to take ownership of tasks while providing guidance as needed. Empower them to make decisions within their scope. Last but not least, focus on outcomes, not outputs. Measure your impact, not by how many lines of code you write, but by the success of the systems you own and the growth of the people you mentor. Track metrics like uptime, deployment frequency, or incident reduction to quantify this impact. By shifting focus on individual achievements to team success, you'll deliver the kind of large-scale measurable impact that defines great senior engineers. Last but not least, and definitely the most important, influence. If ownership and impact are about what you do, influence is about how you get others to care. Others here are your teammates, your manager, and leadership. At the junior or mid-level, influence starts small but builds over time. At this stage, influence is about getting others to see the value in your ideas. Maybe you're convincing your teammates to follow your approach in a code review or gaining buy-in for how you want to solve a problem. Influence doesn't come from a title. It comes from trust, and trust is earned through consistent action. You build influence by being reliable. When you consistently deliver good work, people naturally start to listen to you. 
You also build influence by showing up for others. Help your teammates with code reviews and offer constructive feedback. Ask questions no one else wants to ask because they're afraid of looking dumb. These moments often bring clarity and add value to team discussions. Be an active participant in meetings. Don't just sit back. Contribute thoughtfully. Influence also comes from building relationships. Get to know your teammates outside coding and tasks. Talk about hobbies, weekend activities, or shared interests. When you genuinely connect with people, they're more likely to respect and advocate for you. And here's why that matters. When your case for promotion comes up, your teammates will most likely be the ones to put in a good word for you. The better your relationships are, the more likely they are to mention your contributions during conversations with your manager. Here are some actionable steps you can take to start building influence at the mid-level. Speak up in meetings. Share your thoughts, ask questions, and engage in discussions. Even if you're unsure, showing that you're thinking critically earns respect. Help others. Volunteer for code reviews, ask questions in the chat, and support teammates who are stuck. Being a helpful resource makes you more influential. Celebrate others' wins. Acknowledge your teammates' successes publicly. This shows you're a good team player and strengthens your relationships. Build relationships outside work. Find moments to connect with teammates on a personal level. Whether it's chatting about a shared hobby or grabbing coffee, these interactions make your working relationships stronger. Influence at the senior or principal level is a completely different game. At this stage, influence isn't just about convincing your immediate team. It's about shaping decisions across teams or even the entire company. You're no longer just advocating for a better solution. You're guiding the direction of systems, processes, and priorities. To build influence at this level, you need to be in rooms where decisions are being made. And when you're there, you make a conscious effort to be heard. This doesn't mean shouting louder than everyone else. Nah, it means presenting your ideas in a way that commands attention and respect. Write clear detailed design documents that outline the what, why, and how of your proposal. Back your ideas with data. Metrics and evidence goes a long way in convincing others. Communicate your thoughts clearly and concisely, focusing on how your ideas align with the organization's goals. At this level, people in those rooms need to know your name, and more importantly, they need to associate it with high-value contributions. Here are some actionable steps you can take to build influence at the senior stroke principal level. The first is to align with business goals. Understand the company's objectives and ensure that your ideas or project align with those goals. Speak in terms of values, how your solutions or projects will save costs or increase revenue. Be a thought leader. Share your expertise through design documents, architectural reviews, and presentations. Create resources that become the go-to references for your team or your organization. Master the art of communication. Practice presenting your ideas in a way that resonates with both technical and non-technical audiences. Use storytelling techniques to make sure your points are relatable and memorable. Develop strategic relationships. Build rapport with decision makers, including managers, directors, and other senior leaders. When they see you as a trusted partner, your influence grows. Finally, stay visible. Regularly share updates on your work and its impact, both within your team and across the entire organization. Visibility ensures your contributions are recognized. There you have it. Those are the three pillars. Ownership, impact, and influence. Take ownership like it's your startup, deliver impact like your job depends on it, and build influence like your promotion depends on it because it literally does. When you consistently do these things and have regular conversations with your manager about your career goals, they'll not only see the value you bring, they'll recognize that you're ready for the next level. That's it for this video. For those of you who are new here, my name is Uma. I am a software engineer and a content creator. I love learning and breaking down complex technical topics to make them easy for you to understand. I also coach software engineers to help them grow in their careers and increase their earning potential. If you'd like to work with me, click on the link below to apply for my coaching program. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.